Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today we're going to do a real update on growing in cardboard boxes. So here they are. You saw me in early spring set up the boxes and start to grow them. Let's talk about if it's a success or if it's even worth doing. Now, here you can see we do have some watermelon coming up, but I don't know. Now, the watermelon, in the defense of the cardboard boxes, they were planted too early. That's one thing I will make a statement. There's another one. See, it's kind of wonky shaped. So let's not count that, but look how the tomato plants are struggling. They're turning yellow. There's some new growth coming in. I am going to groom them back and I am going to try to save them for right now. Even the brassica is not doing that well. I've got an eggplant that's really struggling in there. The only thing that's not struggling are the walking onions and the peppers which are doing phenomenal. This tomato is okay. I'm going to do a good grooming on it. And then of course the squash. Now let's look at the squash. All these were growing hybrid zucchini and regular zucchini. I did get fruit off of them. Absolutely. It was worth growing a garden using cardboard boxes for free. But the thing is, would I do it again? I don't know. We'll see next spring when I decide, but I'm looking at it and I'm seeing, now this one I, you know, grew back and it is struggling, but it is coming back. This one did really well early on and petered out on me. Now this one never grew any fruit. And all of a sudden we've got some male flowers here and it's kind of making a comeback. See how I groom them and throw the leaves back there. Everything died out of that. So just compost to that. And that one's trying to make a comeback. But do you see the size of the leaves? See how small they are? Yet they've got all the soil in the world. They've got the ground. And they are petering out on me, a lot of these plants. Now, I did get, for growing for free, using native soil, using wood from around the garden, using whatever I could find, I did have a lot of free stuff go in there and I did get food out of her there. So there's no complaints. But let me tell you something else. Look at this. Let's walk along here. These are storage containers, also known as totes. These are all 18 gallon ones planted at the same time. They are going strong. And a lot of them will go all the way into winter until we get really cold. And that's when they'll die back. Now, why are the cardboard boxes not growing as good? There's a lot of theories behind it. I have not lifted them. One of them could be the cardboard may have had a preservative and it may start breaking down and it's pulling nitrogen from the plant. That could be one thing, though it's got a lot in there as far as greens and I have continued to stuff greens in there and compost in place. Those squash plants are just not doing what these are doing. We've talked about the trees. You know how they send their roots all the way underneath and into totes. They'll go straight inside the totes. They'll block up the holes. Some trees will even kill the plants. They have the ability to do that. Notice how some trees have nothing growing underneath. They can put something out and not allow plants to grow. So it could be tree roots. It could be a lot of stuff. There's so many ways to theory on what's going on. Did it run out of steam because everything I put in there is broke down? Maybe, but I did try to put more in there and they're still struggling. So I'm gonna say probably tree roots or probably just not the ability to hold enough water. When you're dealing with plastic and the plastic totes, they hold water. Notice where I put my holes. See, my holes here are a little high. But they're a good two inches up. That means there's a reservoir of water in here in the summer, because notice those boxes conked out on me in the summer on the heat, may not be holding enough water. Certain plants, tomato plants, squash plants, cannot run out of water. It's not like you see them, oh, there's no water, I'm gonna run out there and give them water. If the leaves turn yellow, they will not go back and turn green again. Keep that in mind, so you wanna groom those off. It could be a water issue, and that's a good big possibility. Just couldn't retain enough water for the squash because zucchini and squash plants, 
they need a lot of water, like watermelon. They need a lot of water. They have to have the ability to pull water up constantly because the fruit is so big. So I'm gonna say that's probably the biggest reason that all the squash conked out and the tomatoes are struggling. I'm gonna call it struggling. Where the peppers, that's a whole different ball game. Peppers, well, they can dry out. If their roots get dry and the plant is not getting enough water, they're just gonna sit there. A lot of plants are like that and they'll wait. They're waiting for their gardener to come in and give them some water and the plants are fine. Their leaves don't even wilt. They just wait. They can retain water differently than tomatoes, watermelon, and squash. So it could be strictly a water issue. Though I water once a day, cardboard boxes may need to be watered twice a day. Now my storage containers here, my totes, I can water those every other day because of the way I've got them set up where the holes are up. So there's a two inch reservoir here, but I think one inch is better, but two inch reservoir of water. When the plants don't have enough water, what they'll do is send their roots down to the bottom and it will wick up on top of that. So as the top dries, the water will be pulled up and it will continue to be able to feed the plants and squash that's growing on it. Pretty much all of these containers right now have zucchini in them. I keep picking and they keep growing. So, would I recommend you growing in cardboard boxes? You know, if you don't mind that it's only gonna last until you, the heat comes in from the summer, then go for it. Because with those boxes, I'm gonna break them down and use them to fill other totes. But for the money that a container costs here, these are only five to seven dollars and you can still catch them on sale at Walmart, check Target, check your stores. You can a lot of times catch them for four and five dollars and thrift stores get them in for two. And I still am picking them up now for two when I see them. I have even picked some up on the side of the road because somebody threw them away because they didn't have a lid or they didn't want them anymore. Whatever the point is, these are so cheap and so easy to put somewhere like up. You can't put a cardboard box on a chair. I've tried it, they eventually fall apart. But you can put these on a chair, you can put them on a ladder. You've seen how we set these up on ladders. You can set them upwards, get them off, put them on some cement blocks, whatever you want if you don't want them on the ground. But you see in between there, I've got all those on the ground that are growing. I have to keep the holes up because the trees will rob the totes of their water and nutrients as well. So my conclusion is, you can't beat a tote. I'm sorry, you can't beat a tote. You can go buy a raised bed anywhere, and they're like $150, and you know what they equal? They equal three totes. I've measured them, I've looked at them, $150, and you get three totes. For less than $20, you can go buy three totes. And those raised beds don't last forever either. A tote, depending on if you take care of it, can go for many years. I've got some in my garden, my bird garden, they're now six years old. You don't let them dry out. So as long as you've got soil in them and you're keeping the soil wet, and even in the winter, just make sure that you keep the soil wet. It keeps the plastic soft. And you know what? So what if they only last three or four years and you've got to replace them? Think of what you've gotten out of them. Now you can always, make your own raised bed. You can put it in the ground. That whole meadow there is in the ground. But if you need to, you know, grow in a container, I have found that these are the greatest things. Besides buckets, you can do buckets too. They're versatile, they're cheap, and they work great. Think of nurseries. You go into a nursery, a plant nursery, and every single plant is in a plastic container. Why? Because it doesn't allow for quick evaporation, it holds water and the plants do better that way. You don't see them in cardboard, grow bags or anything in a nursery because it would simply dry out. They don't have the ability or time to water them all day or put automatic watering systems out. I have no automatic watering system, but I will admit I do use irrigation tubing now, but I'm using that for all different things. I am using that now for trellising and a million and one things, and this is gonna be one of my new favorite things. So I think I've kind of answered your question, and my question is, do I like cardboard boxes? Yeah, it's okay. 
I have a feeling that I may only have one next year here for cardboard boxes for fun. And I think I'll end up putting totes in the others because, well, simply, it's going to give me food way past the summer months into winter. And why not extend the growing life and have less work? Because I don't have to water that much. Because totes simply retain water so much better than a cardboard box. So I hope I've answered your question on that. Absolutely, it's worth it if that's the way you want to grow. I want you to grow. I don't care what you grow in. If you can grow in a paper bag, you go for it. Just grow something, anything. Because even that little bit that you've grown, whether it's in a kitchen window or out in your yard, is important to you and your body. Plus, it's fun. And let me tell you something. Once you start, you're going to start growing all kinds of stuff because it will become part of your life. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.